Hello everyone, this is the uh, the end of week one, the beginning of week number two, and so what I'd like to do is offer up the solutions to the week one questions um, in its own little video format. So I'm looking at the PDF that was uh, supplied to everybody and mine is slightly modified. The week two posting will also be slightly modified. Forgive me as I try to navigate through here with my my hands on the on the screens here, but uh, but the question we're referring to slide number four at the bottom, why did the styrofoam push the tape so much better than just another piece of tape? And so you can see my solution here, the styrofoam pushed so well simply because it's really, really big. And that's not the answer, but the fact that it's really, really big and has lots of space means that it's able to hold more charge. So when I rubbed that styrofoam with the fur, I was putting extra electrons all over that entire surface. So I had simply more electrons pushing that little piece of tape away than if I had just used a second piece of tape. So just more electrons. Why did I get more electrons on there? Yes, it had to do with the styrofoam being bigger, but the actual mass and size of styrofoam was not the actual direct cause. It's the fact that we had extra electrons. The next question um, involved slide number seven, I believe. And so this is where we had uh, two large um, charged objects, whether it was D over here on the left-hand side, the blue positive uh, D tape or the green negative E tape. And so you were asked to draw the proper location and the proper number. Well, first, you've been told repeatedly in this question that the pink items, maybe these are the little bits of paper in the lab, could be anything. These little bits of paper are neutral, which means that if there are four positive signs drawn as the structure, I need to have four negatives and four negatives. Where those are going to be drawn is the next question, but I have to have four if it is indeed neutral. Where do I draw them over here? Well, we talked about electrons being outside the nucleus and being able to move and shift around. So what happens is these negatives are going to be attracted up to the positive and they will literally position themselves in a location that is at the top of my um, object. At the same time, the next question involves where these negatives are found. Well, this big negative here in green is going to repel the four negatives I have down here. And so my four negatives are going to be found along the bottom. Um, and so uh, in doing that, I see that those negatives are able to be moved around by these large outside charged objects. And those large outside charged objects are going to dictate where those negatives are found. Uh, we kind of slide on down after completing the diagram. What would you expect the neutral pink object to do in each diagram? Well, I see that the negatives and positives here are really close together. They will attract. The positives here and the positives here will repel, but they are, albeit a small distance, but they are farther away, and therefore the repulsion will be a little bit weaker. So you could say that you actually have two forces acting on this piece of paper. You've got an attraction here and a repulsion here. The attraction is stronger because it's closer. So attraction wins. Now in physics, we don't draw two force arrows on there. We just combine those two electric forces into one single attractive arrow. The same thing is happening here. The positives are closer to the negative, strong attraction. The negatives are a little bit farther away, a weaker repulsion. Overall, attraction. The final questions that we had were on this slide right here, slide number eight. Um, what do you know? When two objects repel, you know they both have to be charged up the same way. Amount could be different. Maybe this one is really negative. This one's just a little bit negative, but they both have to have the same amount of uh, the same type of charge. Either they're both negative or they're both positive. So the shortest answer, and that's what I'm looking for. I want a nice, short, simple answer. Shortest answer is they have the same charge. We don't know what kind of charge. That's all we know. And the final question we had involved two unknown objects that were attracted to each other. Well, you've got rule four and rule six that could both be um, in play. And so what's the only thing you could say for sure? One of these has to be charged. Maybe the negative, maybe the purple is a charge 
and the green is neutral, they will attract. Maybe the green is charged and the purple is neutral, they will attract. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. We just talked about the previous slide showing how both neutral pink objects were attracted to both positives and negatives. So it doesn't matter whether the purple is a positive or negative or the green is a positive or negative and the other one's neutral. It doesn't matter. What could also be the case? Well, yeah, sure, maybe they could be opposites, but we can't tell. We can't even tell which one is charged. So what's the shortest answer? One of the objects is charged, and we don't even know which one it is. So those are the solutions to week one's questions. If you have any questions beyond that, uh, put, a, put a question on the stream, send me a remind, or you can ask it next time we have our Zoom meeting. So I hope everyone is doing, uh, doing all right, and uh, look for those week two assignments, plural, yes, plural, uh, coming up over the weekend. Thank you.